Welcome to Recalibrate. This is a podcast of Caribou Road Christian Fellowship. Our hope is to create a moment where you get to take a look at your life through the lens of Christ's teaching and recalibrate. Well, welcome back to Recalibrate. Now, we're continuing to look at what happens when God visits a group of people in a special way. And for the last couple of weeks, we've been looking at the area of healing a little bit more in depth than we did on a Sunday morning. Now, today I want to go on and I want to talk about what I think is the most significant thing that, and the most um, important manifestation of the Holy Spirit when he moves amongst a group of people in a special way, and that is the area of prophecy. When the Holy Spirit moves upon a group of people in a special way, when he visits, when there's revival, I think the most remarkable and visible manifestation that the Lord is at work is there is an increase in the spirit of prophecy amongst a group of people. Now, if you listen to my message on Sunday, you might say, well, wait a minute, Pastor, you mentioned that the litmus test for a move of God in a group of people is that intercessory prayer increases, that people begin to intercede and stand in the gap on behalf of others in a way that they've not done before. Well, actually, the answer is that both of those are true because both of them are connected to each other. When we talk about prophecy, and we're going to look at this in in the series that we're going to do here and some of the teachings we're going to do, prophecy is intimately and intricately involved with prayer. They're almost, I could say, on some level, one and the same, that praying and prophecy go hand in hand. And so when I say that when the Holy Spirit comes upon a group of people in a new and a unique way, we will see this rise of all the different forms of prophecy. When we think of prophecy, it's not a singular thing. It's not just as you would imagine Elijah or the prophet Isaiah and the way that they would prophesy. Prophecy is a very all-encompassing word that really helps us understand uh, and, and move in what God's got in store for us. I'm absolutely convinced that the most visible and most important thing that the Holy Spirit is going to do is is this whole area of prophecy. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, Paul the Apostle kind of alludes to this. Now remember that in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he had been talking about the gifts of the Spirit. And then he segue from there in verse Corinthians 13 to talk about how love is more important than even the gifts. That if you had to choose between having the gifts of the Spirit and having love, love is way more powerful. I think that's that's pretty remarkable, isn't it? You know, when we think about revival, um, the gifts are really, 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 really important. But if you get a group of people who flow in love, they're still going to be more effective than people that have the gifts of the Spirit. Now, I don't think, and Paul would definitely argue, it's not a question of either or. When there's a genuine move of God, we're going to move in the gifts of the Spirit, but we're going to move in love like we've never moved in love before. Hallelujah. And then in chapter 14, he says that. He says, first one, let love be your highest goal. For, for, for you people of God and you're looking to see God move, let there be your highest goal be that there would be just an outpouring of love into the world through you like never before. And then he says, but you should also desire the special gifts of the Holy Spirit, especially the ability to prophesy. So here we see that Paul is saying that there's many amazing things that can happen, but love is the first thing we should desire for, to move in a new level of love. And then secondly, I want you to desire to move in a new level of prophecy, a new ability to to move in the understanding of God. In fact, I would argue that the primary reason the Holy Spirit has come to the earth is to stir up and train the people of God and move the people of God to become a prophetic people. Now, you may be saying, well, well that, I don't get that. Like, are we meant to all become like prophets of old and we're meant to go around laying hands on each other and prophesying words over? Because I've been in meetings like that and sometimes the things people are saying, I, I'm 
not sure. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's not God speaking through those people. Is, are you really wanting us all to become charismatic kind of people? Now, that's why I said the word of prophecy. When I speak about prophecy, it's a, it's a very big word that covers uh, many aspects of what God does. But I think the simplest way to understand it is to think about the book of Judges in the Bible. The book of Judges in the Bible is a book that was, uh, tells the story of the people of Israel when they no longer had any leaders. Moses had died as they entered into the promised land, and Joshua and Caleb, who took them into the promised land, had also died. They were now in the promised land, but none of those original leaders who could hear the voice of God were with them anymore. And in that book of Judges, it repeats often this statement, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. What it means is that there were no people, there was no one around who really was able to hear the voice of God. And as a result, the people had no one that could speak to them what God was saying and thinking and admonishing and instructing and guiding them in. And therefore they did what was right, it literally says they did what was right in their own eyes. They had no spiritual understanding, and so they lived their lives according to their carnal understanding. They had no ability to hear the word of the Lord. Now, every now and again, God would raise up judges. These were people like Caleb and uh, Samson and other ones who were called judges. And the Spirit of the Lord would come upon them, and they would help bring the people back to where God wanted them to be. Many of these people who were the judges were very mixed bag individuals. The, even Gideon was tremendous and did a tremendous work of saving the people of Israel and with 300 soldiers overcame the enemy. But as soon as he had done that, he actually went ahead and built an idol and he just did a bunch of stuff that wasn't good. So they were very flawed and very broken people who were being raised up. And the voice of the Lord was so rare in those days. The people missed having a leader who could hear God's voice speak to them. But God's plan was bigger than just having one individual. The people remembered a man called Moses, and he was recognized as somebody who could hear God's voice. Moses was the one who met God at the burning bush. Moses the one who went up to the mountain and received the Ten Commandments and all the laws of instruction and the way to build the tabernacle. It was Moses who confronted Pharaoh. It was Moses who, he, I mean, he was a man who heard from God. And the people had a lot of trust in Moses that if he spoke, he was speaking on behalf of God. He was one who could hear the word of the Lord. It wasn't rare in the day of Moses because the word of the Lord was coming through Moses. But something happened in the story of the Moses that gives us a a little bit of an insight into the heart of God and what God wanted to do in the future. In Numbers chapter 11, we're going to read from verse 24 through to 26. Now Moses went out and reported the Lord's words to all the people. So let me just fill you in what's happened here. Moses is the only one who really hears the voice of God in the nation of Israel when they're in the wilderness. His father-in-law visits him. And because of this, Moses is the only one who is judging. He's the only one kind of making decisions. He's the only one. like It's a one-man show. And his father-in-law visits, who, who lives in a different area and comes to see them. And he tells Moses off. He says, what are you doing? Why are you the only person doing everything? Why are you the only one who can hear God's voice? And as a result of that, Moses heard that and he talked to God about it. And God said, Moses, yeah, no, we need to do this differently. It's going to wipe you out. So there were 70 individuals who were chosen to be elders, to start making judgments, to start ruling, to start being the judges and so on and so forth. And to prove to the people and to help the people understand that these individuals had an anointing similar to, to Moses, Let's read on and see what happens. So he gathered the 70 elders and stationed them around the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in the cloud. Hallelujah, that'd be awesome, right? And spoke to Moses. Then he gave the 70 elders the same spirit that had been upon Moses. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. Did you get that? When the Spirit had rested upon them, they began to prophesy. But after that had happened, it never happened again. So in for this one moment of time, the Spirit of the Lord came upon these individuals 
And they also began to hear God's voice like Moses did. And they also began to prophesy. Wow, that's amazing. To show the people that these individuals also were discerning of God's voice in their lives. What's interesting is that there was a couple of individuals who didn't make it to the meeting. They were late or they, got, they had not put it correctly in their diary. I want to read what happened to them. Two individuals, Eldad and Medad, I love their names, Eldad and Medad, <laughs> had stayed behind at the camp. And they were listed amongst the elders also. But they had not gone to the tabernacle, yet the Spirit rested upon them as well, so they prophesied where they were in the camp. I just think that's absolutely amazing. That they weren't, they weren't there, um, they were somewhere else, but they were one of the ones chosen, so the Spirit came upon them, and were, where they were, I don't know what they were doing, or whether they were doing some hand, work around the house, but as they were doing it, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they also began to prophesy. Here's what's fascinating. Right then, some individuals saw what they were doing. And these individuals thought the only person who was allowed to prophesy was Moses. So they quickly ran to Moses and they said to Moses, Hey, uh, there's two individuals prophesying. Uh, should we stop them? And Moses said, Oh, no, 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 no. My desire is that all of you would prophesy. It's a very, very powerful scripture. It is my desire, you read it in Numbers 11, it is my desire that all of you would prophesy. And I think he was speaking actually by the Spirit of God. It is God's desire that all of the people would be able to hear the word of the Lord. That there would never be a time again where the word of the Lord was rare in those days because it only could come, the Spirit could only be with a few individuals and only those individuals could hear the voice of God. Moses was proclaiming a, a desire of the Father that all people would be able to prophesy. And that's what leads us and brings us into Joel chapter 2. When the prophet Joel begins to prophesy and pick, pick up on this theme of Moses and this desire of God that everyone, everybody would be able to hear the voice of the Lord and not, it wouldn't be one or two like ministers who would hear it, but everybody would. And Joel too, who's, who's a prophet many, many, many years, hundreds and hundreds of years after Moses, prophesies the same thing. He says, listen, in the last days, when God begins to move over all the face of the earth, verse 28, you know the scripture I will pour out my spirit on all people and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. You get that all people will receive the spirit and all of them will begin to prophesy. All of them will begin to hear the voice of the Lord in their time. Absolutely. Your old men will see dreams. Your young people will see visions. Hallelujah. In those days I will pour out my spirit uh, and even on servants, men and women alike. The, 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 this is picking up on the story of Moses. It's saying that God's desire is that everybody would come to a place that they would be able to receive the Spirit and hear the word of the Lord, that the Lord, word of the Lord would not be rare ever again, but it would be plentiful. I love that. You know, when Jesus fed the 5,000, so many of these miracles he does, they are, they are types of what he wants to do that the word of the Lord came to Christ, but he wants to break the word and pass the word out. And there would be an abundance of the word, feeding the 5,000, and there were baskets left over. That was a word the Lord just gave me right then. That the word of the Lord is in abundance. It's flowing freely. It's going out freely because the spirit of the Lord will be on all flesh. And the male and female will prophesy. The servant and the master will prophesy. The young and the old. You'll see the demographics that they talk about here. Everybody will have the spirit of the Lord upon them. And all of them will hear the word of the Lord. I'm not saying that they're going to hear fresh revelation that is going to bring new teaching. That's not what it's talking about. It means that they're just going to be able to recognize what is God and what is not God. What is the flesh and what is the spirit? Wow, what a beautiful, beautiful beautiful, beautiful picture we receive. What a beautiful promise. So when we talk about the coming of the Lord, when we talk about revival, when we talk about the outpouring of the Spirit, I believe one of the main works that happens, one of the main aspects the Spirit wants to do is to bring this fresh 
awareness of the Spirit and the voice of the Lord, the word of the Lord. Now, we're going to see it's going to manifest in many different ways. It's going to manifest in the preaching. It's going to manifest in um, personal words of encouragement and prayer. And we're going to look at that in the next few sessions. But the overarching theme is whatever form it takes, it's this idea that the word of the Lord, instead of being rare, that the word of the Lord is abounding. And where the word of the Lord is abounds, amazing things begin to take place. Well, join with us as we come back in the next session. We're going to continue on from here. We want to thank you for joining us on Recalibrate today. For more information, please check out our website at crcfchurch.com. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done.